Good morning. So for quite a while now I've wanted to work the satellites um, and have a go at them and I've never had any plans for an antenna so I've managed to get some simple plans for a dual band 7 centimetres 2 metres antenna and we're just putting that together now so I've got some uh, 1 inch wood um, I have got some 1 inch box aluminium that I'm going to eventually use and then I'm using these quite thick 8 millimetre aluminium bars um, but they do bend quite nice in the vise in fact a lot cleaner and tidier than I expected so I've got all the pieces um, correctly uh, cut to length I've only bent one side of one of the bent bars of one of the bent elements and I've drilled out for each of those so these are going to go through quite tight but the two bent elements uh, the two meter elements I'm actually going to have to loosen off and then I'm going to have to screw them in with screws just to clamp down on them. So I'm going to have to oversize the holes on the on the two meter elements so that the bent section can be put through and then clamp down with some little screws. OK, so I'm going to carry on finishing that off now. OK, um, so I didn't film very much of the construction. Um, I got a bit carried away with it. So just to go through it all, uh, obviously just marked out. I'll show you the diagram of the plans that I've used, I've tested it now, it is all working. Um, I'll show you what I've made and then I'll explain what I've done wrong and uh, a few things that you perhaps might consider changing in yours and I'll certainly consider when I, uh, if I remake this, which I probably will. So first of all, these are 8mm rods, uh, I wouldn't use them again uh, just because they are too thick to work with. Um, and I'd try and use 3.2. However, I found this 8mm bar very easy to get. It does bend nicely and it makes a nice robust antenna. So there are some pros and cons to it. Um, I'll show you the, the cons in a minute. So if you're going to try and make a quick antenna like this, I'd definitely use 3.2mm um, welding rod. Uh, like I say, I've used this and I would use this again if I was going to make something more permanent. Uh, drilled the uh, holes 7.5 millimeters and then tapped them through with a light mallet and they are very very stiff in there which is good um, and the same with this end one the the problem that you've got is with this driven element here because of course it's split in the middle so therefore um, you can't um, you, you can't get enough purchase with only half of this in because this metal rod only goes halfway and this one only goes halfway and less than that because there's an air gap in the middle so consequently with the 3.2 rod millimeter uh, aluminium you can use normal connection blocks I couldn't with these so I've had to drill and tap them and again if I'm okay because I've got my workshop but if you were making a um, if you're trying to make this at home limited materials then uh, or limited workspace then that's going to be difficult and another thing because it is only going in a certain distance I had to have something to extend them to give it a bit more stability so this piece of plastic here I actually drilled nearly part way ran the rods in both sides and then it naturally makes an air gap because of the plastic I didn't drill right through. And then that makes them a bit firmer sitting in there. Um, I don't know whether I've explained that very well, but basically it's this that gives the support. And again, um, people wouldn't necessarily have had a lathe and a piece of plastic floating about at home. Whereas again, little terminal connector blocks work really well there. So I've ended up drilling tapping mine. Uh, so it works. Uh, the other thing that's not great, and that I'm definitely going to figure out uh, probably next, uh, is these uh, little spacers. There needs to be a 14 millimeter space in there. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do on the other side. So what I'm going to do on this side actually is I'm going to, um, this is heat shrink. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to get some dowel, uh, wooden dowel, 14.9, uh, 14 millimeters put that in there, then put the heat shrink over the whole lot and then shrink it down. Um, this is a, this is just on loose so I can pull these apart. Um, so that's, that's why that's all wobbly there. It needs that dowel in the middle of it to keep them spaced nicely apart. So that's what I'm gonna do at the end. Um, so I'm gonna sort that one out and I'm, I'm, I'm just testing it now and it all works. Just wait to test SWR was right before I started heat shrinking the uh, heat shrink on. Um, it's working. I was an absolute numpty, an absolute numpty. If you're wondering why the end is so uh, long, when I was measuring out, I measured out for the handle on that side. Of course, the two meter section is at the bottom. So what did I have to do? Splice on this extra piece of wood, which I've split. 
and I've not got any more so I'm going to have to sort out a new handle but it's all working um, so obviously this comes down the wire comes back down to a uh, PL259 connector and this is just uh, one two three four five basically six coils if you like or five and a half coils um, going round the boom it works really nicely um, I've just been testing it with my mum uh, who lives uh, about a mile away so that's fine I've just hit one of the local repeaters I say local a good few miles away about eight miles away uh, no problem it is really nice and it's nice and directional Two Echo Zero, Charlie, Charlie Delta, going CQ on the satellites. Echo Zero, Charlie, Charlie Delta.